Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we will feature a different kind of animal. I started with one normal snake. Like like most breeders, like most keepers, they start out with the most basic morph, which is the normal morph. I had that snake for quite some time. And then during the pandemic, uh, kami ni Andoy, we decided, I think two snakes from Cebu. I, go, I, I told him, let's, let's try to take care, take care of some more snakes. Uh, because it was pandemic, you know, we, uh, we had we had nothing to do. Probably most breeders, they told me never to say, "This is the last snake." We decided to go into breeding. Did some research, uh, YouTube, gotten acquainted with uh, a few breeders from Cebu and from Manila who were so happy to help me uh, start out. So that was my first season. I bred, I think, it, that it, it, it was three females. This is my third season. Uh, we were able to breed an, uh, quite a number of uh, females. A legal keeper or breeder from the time I started. I, I, I tried to ask around from my friends. I was able to learn that I should uh, have my own business name to be able to register sa, with, with the DENR. It's 3K Exotics because I'm Kido. Kido, yeah. My two children are Kicks and K. Number one, ball pythons are non-venomous, and they are not again. They are not aggressive. They are not aggressive snake. It's not in their nature to be aggressive. If it rains ball pythons here, not a single one will come to us and bite us with the purpose of biting us. Or when they feel threatened, they make themselves into a ball, and then they hide their their head in the middle of that ball or in the center of that ball. That's why they're called ball pythons. They're very docile creatures. They're very, very easy, low maintenance. Adult size, probably three to four feet. That's, that would be around three to four kilos. Uh, it all depends on their feeding response. It all depends on how you feed them. But that's it, very low maintenance. You feed them, if you're just a keeper, you feed them once a week. Hands down, it's cheaper to take care of a ball python, hands down. I prepared two extra bins. One is where we transfer the eggs because after cutting, we still put it back into the incubator. The other bin is prepared for when the snakes actually hatch or when they come out of their, their eggs because they don't do that uh, together. So someone or a, a snake would probably come out earlier than, than their siblings. Okay, so I usually this is the way I do my ID3K. That's my... That's the my uh, ID, the 3K, exotics. The year, so this is the breeding year, 23, TK23. And then this C, that's for clutch. So this is clutch 57. Okay, so this tissue is the substrate. So we, sh we usually would want to have a moist substrate for, for the eggs when it goes back to the incubator. This is the pairing of what we're going to cut. It's a Desert Ghost uh, project. It's uh, one of the more popular recessive genes. Use a paper towel in between the bin and the actual cover of uh, the bin to prevent uh, moisture coming from the bin, uh, from the cover to 
fall onto the eggs. So that's uh, one way to prevent uh, development of molds. Usually, we get uh, we get an idea of wh what we were able to produce when they when they are actually out of the egg. But usually, pagka madami pa when when there's still a lot of uh, yolk sa loob ng egg inside the egg, uh, it's still hard to really identify. Okay, so it goes there. The joy of breeding ball pythons is priceless, especially when you start breeding and then when you're towards the end and then you cut. We, because as breeders, we cut the eggs. We try to help the, the, the hatchlings to come out of their eggs. We call it cutting. When we cut, that's the most exciting part because that's the time you see what you were able to produce. For a breeder, this is what we call a rack system. So it's the most convenient and ideal setup for, for a breeder because uh, we try to maximize the space. These are just you know, storage boxes that we fitted into a customized rack. That's, that's, that's the rack system. Basically, it's the, it's the system that's being used by almost all the breeders around the world. When we were trying to cut uh, that clutch, I was I tried to show you two extra bins. One bin would contain the eggs that has been cut and one bin would be brought here and wait for the snakes to actually hatch. So when they actually hatch, they would be transferred to another bin that's, that's that would be having this setup. So we we um, provide for them one uh, drinking a water dish and then okay so we are now this clutch we in this clutch we are just waiting for them to actually shed out to have their first shed out this is the pied this is the pied recessive gene this is actually a black pastel black pastel pied and i believe this is the female this is the male. So surely these two siblings would definitely be going to our hold back rack. Okay, this is one of the, my uh, prize collection for this season. This is a super black pastel. This is black pastel. This is uh, this one. I have yet to identify this one. Uh, I'm, I'm, I st I'm still trying to find out if this one has a black pastel, but this is still a pied. So in this clutch, I was able to produce three pieds, visual pieds. Two super black pastels and one black pastel. It's a good clutch, a good clutch. One of the clutch, clutches I'm really proud of. Again, like I said, you have a target project for a certain pairing. And then in case you get the target project, of course, you're going to hold on to it. So we call it as holdbacks. So one of my prized holdbacks is a double recessive. It's called an albino pied. Oh, it's in shed. But this is an albino pied. Oh, beautiful. Kaya lang in shed. In shed. This is actually an albino and a pied. Ang is an albino pied. Okay. Uh, one of my prized produce for this season is what we call this combo is called a Batman. It's actually it's actually a spot nose leopard clown, a visual clown. So for the joy of breeding, this is how this is how we do it. So this is a leopard clown. That's a leopard clown. And this is a spot nose clown. 
Now, you put the two snakes together. And this is the result. That's the result. That's a spot-nosed leopard clown. From this and this, you get this. Yes. And that was my target project. So it's a definite hold back. So I achieved good, no? Yes. So this is an actual, this is a female that I'm going to hold on to for this season. It's beautiful, beautiful. This, oh, in shed parin. This is also another, uh, another snake we produced as a double recessive. It's a caramel albino pied. Kaya lang it's in, it's in shed, sayang. So, this is more on the orangey side. Very beautiful, actually. This snake is beautiful. Another one of our holdbacks. Kanin ko apu po kain ni sir. <laughs> it's just a yellow, it's a yellow belly pad. You see the face? The, that eyes and... Ni? <laughs> Happy face, huh? <laughs> During the breeding season, up to the point where they actually lay their eggs, we tried to control, control the temperature of the room. So we installed an AC, an air condition, but then we maintained the temperature to about between 26 to 28 degrees Celsius. It's not um, really the air condition, the, the temperature that uh, you know we use for our rooms when we sleep. It's, it's just a controlled temperature. First two seasons, namin, uh, it resulted into a lot of slugs. Slugs is what we call the eggs that has not been fertilized. We saw the difference when we utilized the air condition. We saw immediately the difference. For this season, very minimal. Of course, there's always a margin that you, you know, devote for slugs, but it should be at a minimal. Basically, uh, sa breeders, it's not the size, it's the weight. Minimum for our females, we breed when they reach 1.5 kilos, minimum. For males, 700, 800 grams for males, they're ready to breed. As long as uh, you're sure that they have the sperm plugs already, uh, then for sure you'd be able to use it as a breeding but then for females of course they're the ones who's going to carry the eggs and then another uh, another thing that they do when they during the breeding season is they go off feed when they start uh, getting pregnant so when they start to develop their follicles and then so they go off feed basically they go off feed so they need the bulk before they go into the breeding season they you know they need to stock up on their weight for them to you know, have enough to carry the eggs. Okay, this one is also one of my biggest. Yes, that's it. Max niyan. Max niyan. For this season, this mama gave us, I think, around 11 to 12 eggs. Good tanan, Good tanan yes. The, 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 the bigger they are, of course. And then, it all depends on the follicles they are able to produce. Okay. One of the most popular snakes we have is this one. Uh, ang regular color niya is like cookies and cream. This would be all white. Actually, the reason why it's pinkish right now is because it, she is in shed. But this part here would be all white, all white. Apart from the the patterns here in sa kanyang dorsal, this would be all white, as in white. That's why. During the show, especially you know, the recent show, this one of the Mano more popular. Yes, parang cookies and cream. 
we, emoji. We called her emoji. Yes. We named her emoji. This is the name we gave them for it, for them, you know, for communication purposes between me and Andoy. So it's easier to, to, identify. to identify a specific snake because of the name. But this is the actual morph. This is their actual morph. And this is their actual picture when they were small. The, well, the QR code, we placed the QR code. QR code. It, it's, it's a, the QR code was produced by uh, an app I use to maintain my snakes. It's called Reptiscan. Plus, uh, and then this is gender. gender. Yes. Well, if we have indeed uh, produced uh, Visual Desert Ghost, then it's, uh, it's uh, you know, we've hit our, uh, our target project for this clutch. So, of course, that would make any breeder happy. This uh, bin goes back into the incubator because we don't actually consider this clutch to have hatched. We are we cut the eggs just to assist them to be able to, you know, come out of their eggs. The actual hatching would be when they actually come out of their eggs, and then when they uh, the umb umbilical cord is uh, separated from from the actual snake. I don't look at it as I'm trying to breed to make money out of my snakes. I, I don't look at it this, that way. It's more of the passion I have in breeding, the passion I have in trying to produce my target project. And then those snakes that I don't need, then those are the snakes I'm able to share to other people. That's the way I look at it. Guys, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoy kayo and you learned something about ball pythons. So please like the channel and subscribe na rin. And don't forget to like also the 3K Exotic pages. Kung ano man yung mga pages nila, i-share ko sa link below. Thank you guys.